This video is brought to you by Women in Parenthesis, a project exploring the work of Iris Murdoch, Philippa Foote, Elizabeth Anscombe and Mary Midgley. To find out more about us and access worksheets and podcasts about these four amazing philosophers, visit us at womeninparenthesis.co.uk. Mary Midgley on the problem of evil. Who was Mary Midgley? She was a philosopher who lived from 1919 until 2018. And she's best known for her work on animal ethics and the environment. But she also wrote a book called Wickedness. And this book explores the idea of wickedness along with evil, wrongdoing, and all other kinds of general moral human nastiness. Now, she talks about the problem of evil in this book, but mainly in order to say that she doesn't think it's very interesting. Now, I'll leave it up to you whether you agree with that or not. But for Midgley, the really important questions were about the sources of evil in human beings and nothing to do with God at all. But what she says about evil in human beings has some interesting implications for how we talk about the problem of evil. So today I'm going to talk to you about why Midgley doesn't find the problem of evil very interesting, but also about why what she says might still be interesting for someone who is interested in the problem of evil. So first, let's run over a really simple version of the problem of evil. It starts with the traditional attributes of God in Abrahamic religions like Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Now, according to the mainstream views in these religions, God is omnibenevolent or all good. God is omniscient, all knowing. God is eternal or everlasting. And God is omnipotent all-powerful. So let's just consider the omnibenevolence and omnipotence. So according to the problem of evil, if God is omnibenevolent, then he doesn't want bad stuff to happen. If God is omnipotent, then he's able to prevent bad stuff from happening. And yet bad stuff happens. So why is that? There are also a couple of different kinds of problem of evil because there are different kinds of bad stuff that happens. So we have natural evil, that's bad things that happen due to natural causes. So things like natural disasters, disease, animal suffering in nature and so on. And we also have moral evil. So that's people doing bad things, many of which cause suffering. Now, as we've already briefly seen, Mary Midgley thought we shouldn't worry too much about all of that. So why not? Well, she thought that it involved a really weird way of talking about God. So she said that discussions of the problem of evil generally go ahead as though God is being put on trial in a courtroom, as though he's a potentially negligent boss, corrupt teacher or riot inciting president. Now, one side, the prosecution, argues that God is guilty. And what does that mean? Well, it means that he's not all, all that his worshippers make him out to be. Either he can't be all good, he can't be all powerful, or he doesn't exist at all. The other side, the defence, stick up for God and they say, hang on, no, he's not guilty of these charges and I can tell you why. And they do that in a range of ways. So they often appeal to reasons that God might have for permitting evil, such as allowing humans free will or giving us the chance to develop important capacities. Now, Midgley thinks that this is just a really messed up way of talking about God. So think about it in this way. Either God exists or God doesn't exist. 
Now, if God doesn't exist, then the whole discussion is just waffling on about nothing. There's nobody to put on trial. And if God does exist, she says, well, he's way bigger and more mysterious than a bad boss or a corrupt politician. So it's pointless judging him according to the normal standards that we use to think about human actions. So either way, Midgley says, talking about the problem of evil in this way is just pointless. Instead, Midgley thinks that we ought to focus on evil as a human thing. However we account for evil coming about in the first place, its immediate and obvious source is in us. She's talking about moral evil here, but we'll come back to the idea of natural evil a bit later. So first of all, she thinks about the cause of evil. Does it come about because of things outside of us? like our upbringing or the conditions that we find ourselves living in? Or is it something in our natures, something about the way that we are internally that makes us do evil things? In other words, does evil come from the outside or from the inside? Now, what Midgley says about this is that we just don't have to choose so the answer has to be both. There are powerful outside factors that influence our behaviour, but that wouldn't happen at all if we weren't built in a way that makes it possible. She also argues that evil isn't an actual thing, but it's more a kind of a lack or a dysfunction. So there's something that ought to be happening with us, and when we do evil, that something is absent or broken. We have capacities that allow us to be good people. And when these go wrong, we commit bad acts. So evil is a consequence of us being capable of doing good. So we saw that Midgley thought that the problem of evil wasn't very interesting. But all the same, her more general thoughts about evil might have some important consequences for how we think about the problem. Now, Midgley was very keen on the idea that humans are natural animals like other creatures on the planet. So our ability to behave morally, she thinks, is part of our nature as it naturally evolved. Now, if evil comes about when things go wrong with this natural capacity for goodness and only exists because of that capacity, that means that there isn't a clear difference between natural evil and moral evil. The fact that we're able to do wrong is something that has to be explained in the same way that we explain earthquakes, plagues and so on. Now, that doesn't mean that people aren't responsible for their evil actions, just that the human ability to do evil is part of nature and needs to be understood in the same way. Now, Midgley's view also allows us to say that evil isn't an actual thing that God created, so he didn't decide, right, I'm going to make the badness now. Instead, it's a dysfunction of a good thing that he made. And it's a dysfunction that needs to be possible in order for us to do good things. It's an absence of good rather than a positive thing in itself. And why does this need to be possible? Well, if we weren't capable of doing bad stuff, the good stuff that we did would not be done freely, so we couldn't properly describe it as morally good. So all this leaves us with a few questions to think about in terms of the problem of evil. So firstly, do you think that Midgley is right to argue that if God exists, it would be pointless to judge him according to human standards? Secondly, if moral evil is a feature of humans as animals, can we separate moral evil from natural evil? So do you think it's wrong to say that they come down to the same thing? 
thirdly, do you think that Midgley is right that evil is a dysfunction or a lack rather than an actual thing? What does this mean for the problem of evil? Finally, are other natural evils just absences of goodness in otherwise functioning systems? So think about a drought, for example. Is that just a dysfunction of the usual climate system that allows the natural world to flourish? Of course, this might raise a further question. So climate change makes all of this way more complicated. So perhaps that's another way that it becomes hard for us to separate human evils from natural evils. So that's all for now. You can learn more about Mary Midgley at notesfromabiscuittin.com and in parenthesis.co.uk. Goodbye.